That was an amazing interview. What an incredible guy. Yeah. I mean, he's, he has walked the walk. I mean, somebody who's taken a stand and paid the price and lived for it. Yeah, but super impressed with his life and his career. I thought some of the things he said that were really interesting, like, you know, bullies only win if you're intimidated. Um, I think the hostility and the death threats that he's had, um, what we would think of as like acts of violence, uh, could all be summed up in sort of kind of like a hyper level of bullying. But I think he is absolutely right. It only works if you respond and if you actually stand down but if you continue to hold your position and stand up and continue to speak out um, advocate for what you believe then it doesn't work it isn't effective and ultimately in all these battles he was taking on as governor he won everything from overcoming that recall uh, to passing really significant legislation through the legislature Um, his super effective governor his record Uh, was, you know, nationally reported on and known. Um, He's known in government as one of the few people who can actually get things done in government. But it was because he refused to be intimidated by all the threats and all of the aggression. I think it's really interesting. Yeah, it is. And I I really appreciate the fact that he's now investing his life in the next generation of Americans. And, I mean, I remember when I was interning in D.C. back in college, going to a Young America Foundation event myself. And it was the first time I think I'd seen Dinesh D'Souza speak in Mm. public and to hear his ideas and uh, be able to ask questions. It was a really inspiring moment for me. And I can only imagine what these youth are experiencing, getting to go to conferences and conventions and hear from all these thinkers across... um, across ethnicities and backgrounds, but who have shared values and beliefs and convictions that aren't really uh, being promoted or celebrated in our mainstream culture today, and yet are the foundation for how we came to be the country that we are. Mm -hmm. Um, To your point about the standing up to bullies, I think all of us at some point in our lives have had to deal with a bully um, or multiple bullies and the lesson that you learn is the more you cower to a bully sure. the more they're going to bully you and even if you stand up to the bully and they end up really hurting you in the process there is something that's done to you on the inside in terms of that an inner strength that you realize Hmm. you have that you didn't know before you took that stand. I'm thinking of just moments in my own childhood being, you know, bullied for my my race right. and um and how important it was to take a stand for my own dignity, right? But also not to come to a point where I was hating the person who was bullying me and instead trying to build a bridge with them, which was what my parents taught me. And that's the other way to deal with bullies too. Um, I was surprised that with a number of bullies in my life, I was able to build those bridges. I wish we could find a way to do that now. I think there are some people who are doing that. That goes back, you know, a lot of uh, leaders will reference Lincoln and he did that intentionally in his cabinet, that team of rivals that he brought together. And so there is still some of that that's happening. Um, But that has to be a two way street. I thought that the Governor Walker's prescription for how to stand, I thought was really interesting. The ask questions yes. and be optimistic. Those are two things I think are a little bit more rare in our modern culture. There's sort of a presumption of knowledge, like I already know everything, so I don't need to inquire or ask, or the other person already knows everything, so I don't have a right to ask. And asking questions I think is important as well as not assuming the worst or um, thinking it's all hopeless or despairing but that you still Mm -hmm. can make a difference or do something reminds me of that story from my dad getting called into a parent-teacher conference when I was in elementary school my parents were summoned this did happen here in Anchorage apparently I wasn't the best student in class and 
the reason that the teacher wanted to talk to my parents was because I was challenging authority a lot. I was just asking a lot of questions and she didn't appreciate it. And I guess that really made my dad mad. And so, you know, my dad and he pounded the table really hard and said in his super gruff Alaska dad voice, good, then she's doing what I told her to do. She's supposed to challenge authority. And he walked out of the parent-teacher conference. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> consistent with the history of our country, right? These are people, right. who, our founders are people who challenged authority. Right. And when they got home and I said, I was a little nervous, you know, I thought I was doing good at school. Hey, how did the parent-teacher conference go? I went, great kid, keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I was always encouraged at home to ask a lot of questions and poke holes in the arguments of the people over me. And also to, if I can't get in through the front door, then I'll get in through the side door, then I'll get in through the back door. Um, you know, as Governor Walker was saying, be optimistic. Well, if you can't get it done this way, then you can get it done another way. You and I've talked about this. It's kind of like the practice of law. Um, there's a million red light attorneys out there. No, 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 no. I don't even understand why those people get paid. That's so easy to say. But it's rare to find a green light attorney, an attorney who will stay optimistic and find a way to work around an obstacle to get something done. Um, that's what I see Governor Walker saying is, how can we find solutions? How can we find a workable path? Um, what are the other facts or data that I need to know? What are the questions I need to ask? Um, what do I not understand already from the other side or another perspective? I thought those were really good practical solutions for how to take a stand for someone who's not used to it. Um, to your point, ask a bully a question is kind of a form of resistance. And when you start to resist, you'll be surprised how quickly they flee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think not just being willing to ask questions, but also willing to answer questions. Sure. And, he, and he highlighted that with when he was talking about folks like Ben Shapiro and others who are going to college campuses and spending at least half the time just answering questions. Right, right? not being afraid of that. Exactly. We have to be willing to, I mean, it's part of what's necessary for a dialogue. You have to be willing to engage. You have to be willing to answer for yourself your convictions, mm -hmm. your views, your beliefs in a way that's respectful and honoring. And if the other side doesn't respond in kind, that's where we take our stand. We continue to stand for what we believe optimistically, like mm -hmm. he said, um, but firmly and not backing down. I think a lot of people become bystanders instead of sure. standouts, so to speak, um, because of the kind of intimidation um, that we're seeing these days. And it's, it's really unfortunate. Our founders refused to be intimidated by tyrannical monarch and we have a consistent history in this country of the biggest developments that we've seen, the most positive mm. changes were by people who were willing, like Governor Walker just said, to to be positive, to paint a positive vision of the future and to go relentlessly for it. Yeah, Whether it was Reagan com communism, yeah. yeah, Martin Luther King Jr. And, and the civil rights movement, Abraham Lincoln and the Civil War. I mean, you could go on and on. Yeah. Something he mentioned sort of indirectly, but I think it's important to draw out, is he would have had a hard time doing what he did had he not had a community of supporters around him. Yes. The people who encouraged him, the people who prayed for him, their friends and community. And I think that's another important way to stand. If you're not the person at the podium or the person on TV or the guy in the governor's mansion, um, just that person who came up and, and told him, I'm praying for you and your wife every day. He said that got them through a really pivotal time. I think that that's a important part for us to take away that um, standing means doing so in community. Um, that It's really hard to stand out there alone. But to do that together, I think, is really important. It's a like you've been saying, it's sand is a community of people. And that's one of the things we're trying to create together online through social media and on the YouTube pages. Um, who, who do you know out, who else is out there going through stuff that you're not having to go through this alone? Because we're not actually in this alone. There's a lot of people going through the same battles, the same questions, et cetera. But when you are together and running these ideas past each other, it's a lot easier. And he also made the great point 
that not everybody has to stand in the same way. Uh, and I thought right. that was important. Some of us are called to be political leaders. Others are called to be the people who support those political leaders right. or who pray for them and whatnot. And so uh, very great, like practical advice, positive counsel and inspiring uh, wisdom from Governor Scott Walker and in his role at Young Americans Foundation. Well, in total forerunner. He, so he took on these battles like a decade ago as governor that we're now seeing sweep the nation. Like he passed a landmark voting rights law, just a simple bring your voter ID when you come vote. And that got challenged as unconstitutional, but it actually was upheld by the state Supreme yeah. Court, upheld in federal court. Um, the U.S. Supreme Court denied cert, so ultimately his law was upheld. But now this has become an issue across the United States. Are, are you allowed to bring voter ID or not? And this is something that Scott Walker pioneered as governor. So pioneering standing, pioneering voting rights or election integrity, pioneering overcoming governor recalls. <laughs> yep. I, I think that it was a great conversation with somebody who's pioneered how to stand.